evening. Welcome to Buckner Fellowship. Uh, thank God for all of you that are here. Thank God for those who are watching uh, by way of internet. Uh, thank God for all of you. Uh, we'll just go ahead and dive right in. Uh, I'm going to probably get out of here a little earlier tonight. Uh, so we'll, we'll just dive right in and then we'll, uh, we'll continue from there. Uh, go ahead and turn in the book of 1 Corinthians chapter 9. We left off here uh, dealing with this issue of Paul uh, talking about his authority to the carnal Corinthians who were questioning his apostleship. Uh, and so, so what, when we talk about this and we go through this and understand the book of Corinthians, we, uh, we understand that they were a carnal group they were saved, they were just acting as though they weren't saved because they were not following the actual doctrine, okay? Uh, and so when we see this, we understand Paul was trying to correct their behavior, but the proper way to correct behavior is to change the mindset by way of doctrine, okay? Uh, scolding people, as religion tends to do, is not the proper way to handle misbehavior, okay? Misbehavior needs to be handled in the mind. Uh, I always say this a lot of times, the mind is the battleground, okay? Uh, God uh, gets to our minds through his word. Uh, the devil gets to our minds through our uh, perception and our uh, senses, okay? Uh, and so he uses the things that we can touch, taste, feel, see in order to get to our minds, okay? And that's why there's a battle between the flesh and the spirit, okay? Uh, and so, again, that's what uh, Paul is dealing with. But any time you want to change the, mind, change the behavior of a person, you have to change the mindset. Uh, and so that's, that's the, the, the thing about it. And I always tell people, uh, most people think that if they can just get out of the position that they're in and change locations, then everything will be okay. Uh, but if you change locality and you have the same mentality, you'll act in this new location the way you've always acted. Uh, and so again, when Paul is dealing with these Corinthians, he's dealing with them on the basis of instilling them to get the doctrine in which he had previously taught them. Because if he can get the doctrine, if they can understand and follow the doctrine, the mind will be renewed. Okay, That's why Paul says in Romans 12 and 2, do not conform to this world, but be renewed by the transfer, uh, be, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Okay, uh, and so understand that's what Paul is dealing with with this group of Corinthians, and now he's at a point now where he they're questioning his apostleship. So in order to vindicate himself or in order to prove his apostleship, uh, that's what he's doing in this chapter nine of First Corinthians. Okay, uh, go ahead. Let's uh, we left off. I read it about verse nine and dealing with these verses on Sunday. Uh, and so we'll read these verses here, and then uh, let's go ahead and have a word of prayer. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love, your kindness. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for who you are. Uh, Father God, we thank you now for your, your, your understanding, your grace. Uh, we thank you now for the salvation that you set forth before us. Uh, Father God, we thank you for the peace which surpassed all our understanding. Uh, we ask that you continue to strengthen us and build us up in our inner man. Uh, we ask now that you uh, strengthen us uh, today as we go through your word, line upon line, precept upon precept. Uh, open up our eyes of spiritual enlightenment that we may see the truth and the things thereof, uh, and that we may walk according to your will. Uh, we ask now that you continue to bless this ministry as we go forward with word, truth, deed, and in doctrine. Uh, so in Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. 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 All right, First Corinthians 9 here. Look at verse, 10, uh, verse 9. For it is written in the law of Moses, Thou shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treaded out the corn, Doth God take care for oxen? Uh, and again, Paul is asking, all right, all of these questions, okay? Let's go back up to verse 1, all right? If you notice, every verse, okay, every thought has a question mark, okay? Mm -hmm. These are rhetorical questions that he's asking these Corinthians in order to prove himself as their apostle. All right, look at verse 1, 1 Corinthians 9. Am I not an apostle? Obviously, yes, he is. Am I not free? Yes, he is. Have I not seen Jesus Christ our Lord? Yes, he has. Are not ye, speaking about the Corinthians, my work in the Lord? Yes, they are. If I be not an apostle unto others, yet doubtless I am to you, for the seal of my apostleship are what? Ye in the Lord. Okay? And then he goes on to say, My answer to them that do examine me is this. Now he's asking questions about his.
his authority. Do I have the authority to do these things? And again, the obvious answer is yes, he does. All right, now, but he also taught them in 1 Corinthians 6 and verse 12 that although all things are lawful unto me, all things are not what? Expedient. Expedient. All things are not beneficial, okay? And so again, a lot of what he wasn't doing, all right, as an apostle, all right, they were looking at as some sort of weakness okay to him but it actually was his strength the fact that he could do these things as an apostle because he had authority but he chose not to for their sakes okay and so understand when it comes to understanding these particular issues all right with the corinthians we see this even today with people all right we have to act a certain way just because we have the power and authority to do something it may not be beneficial to actually do it all right, it's not unlaw it's not unlawful for us to do certain things, but it may not be beneficial. And that's the goal. That's the thing we have to look at as we're doing this. So Paul is coming down and he's now getting to the point of pre they who preach the gospel ought to live of the gospel. Because again, he had the authority to be taking money from them or charging them based on his service. He had the authority to do so. All right, because it is, and we went to the scripture in First Timothy, where uh, again, people that preach the gospel, the right word of God, and for the right dispensation, okay, ought to live of the gospel. That's how God does that. He got, God purposes. We we saw this on Sunday, Second Corinthians nine and six. God purposes it in the believer's heart, okay, or whatever that person has purpose in their heart, so let him give, not grudgingly or of necessity, for God loves a what cheerful, cheerful giver. And then he's at verse eight goes on to say he's able to make all grace abound towards you. Okay, so God supports his ministers in this dispensation by the gracious gifts of the saints. Okay, but again, Paul is using his liberty to not charge them. All right, because just imagine now if he had he charged them, as carnal as they are, they sure enough would have been talking about him. Oh, look, he just want to take our money. All right, and so understand, but most preachers use these verses where it says, for, uh, Thou shalt not, muzzle the, uh, the, uh, shalt not muzzle the mouth of the ox that treadeth the corn. And then they go to 1 Timothy, says, He who la labors uh, 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 is worthy of double honor. But notice that verses 1 Timothy 5 and 18 says that he who labors in word and in doctrine is worthy of double honor. So anybody preaching tithing is not worthy of double honor because they're not preaching the right doctrine. Okay? And so, so understand when it comes to that, there's specific prerequisites or qualifications in order to be worthy worthy of this double honor. Not everybody that says he's a preacher is worthy of that. All right? Yeah, I've, I've been just noticing this. Paul had to exercise who he was in almost every one of the cities that he went into. Right. When he went to the Ephesians, he had to prove his, his apostleship. And, 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 and a lot of that comes because of his reputation. Right. His right. reputation Thank preceded you. him. Okay, so uh, because he was a persecutor, a well-known persecutor of those who followed the way. Okay, uh, that that provided for some kind of a some kind of hesitation now. So this same guy who was doing all this stuff, just imagine now somebody just you know killing him, taking him to jail, and all this other stuff. Now he's preaching the faith which he wants destroyed, Galatians 1.24, all right? So now he's preaching the faith which he wants destroyed. That, that's going to make you a little hesitant now. Yes. All right, now hold on now. Make sure this brother is straight, okay, because I want to get killed, okay? Right. So, so, so understand, so a lot of times that caused him, okay, to, to have to uh, vindicate himself in a lot of places, okay? Because and then, and then, like most people even today, he's the apostle separate from the other 12, yeah. Okay, uh, so so again, his ministry is distinct. Okay, uh, uh, and the fact that he was the only one that was sent, all right, with a mystery dis message uh, after God, after Jesus Christ had risen in his, his glorified bodies. Okay, so so again, everybody else was sent during his earthly ministry. All right, uh, and so so that's the cause for him having to do that. All right, all right, city, so right, 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 all right. Look at First Corinthians nine, verse ten. All right, so now, or said he altogether for our sakes. For our sakes, no doubt, this is what? Written. written. The fact that this verse in Deuteronomy 25 and 4 was written, and Paul is quoting it in verse 9, it was for what? Our sakes, as Paul says, okay? Because he that plows should plow in what? Hope. 
right? The fact that the ox is plowing, all right, but he has the food there, he's plowing in hope, knowing that he can get the job done because he can eat right there. But if you muzzle the ox, then he can't do that. There's no hope for him, okay? All right, so that's what he's saying there. And he that thresheth in hope should be partaker of his what? Hope. Look at verse 11. Now, if we have what? Sown. If we have sown unto you, now Paul is going to get into sowing and reaping. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your what? Carnal things. So again, if we're sowing to you spiritually now, is it such a great thing for you to pay for our, uh, our stay or our meal? That's not such a great thing because what, you, what you're getting is far greater than what you would be giving me, okay? And that's, that's exactly what Paul is saying, okay? Uh, and that's, that's how you ought to, that's how they should have been looking at it even today. What you give to a ministry, you're not giving it to the person, okay? You're giving it to the, for, the, for, for the furtherance of the gospel, as the scripture says, okay? And so look at this. Look at verse 12. If others be partakers of this power over you, again, he's speaking about his power and the authority that he has, okay? Are not we rather? So if ye are, go back to verse 1, the end of verse 1, are not ye my work, what? In the Lord. So if anybody should have this power, should rather we have this power? They were, they were out going out paying other people, right? Mm -hmm. But then questioning Paul. And he was the one that had the real authority. All right? Look at this. Nevertheless, we have not used this what? Uh, power. Great leaders don't use their power to lead. Okay? They use their liberty. Okay? They use the fact that they can actually lead people without the authority. Anytime you have to lay down an iron fist when you're a leader, that means you're not doing a very good job. Okay? All right? Because you should be able to say what you mean and mean what you say, and people are, should be willing to follow you. Okay? And so that's what Paul is saying. We have not used this power, but suffer all things, lest we should hinder what? The gospel of Christ. So we have the authority, but we're not using it because it possibly could what? Hinder the what? Gospel of Christ. You see that? A lot of people don't even go to church because of tithing. And pastors talking about money every sentence that, that comes out of their mouth. People don't even go to church. So they're not hearing the gospel, okay, because the preacher believes that the preacher needs to be worthy of double honor and all of this other stuff that they teach. And so people don't, eat, so the gospel is being compromised because you want to get paid, okay? Because, again, you, as a preacher who teaches the right doctrine, who's word, laboring in doc, word and in doctrine, ye ought, you ought to live of the gospel. That's how God designed it, okay? All right, so now... I work for a living, okay? I don't get paid a salary from the church. I don't get paid anything. I work, okay? So I use the liberty to go out and work, okay? They did, They were disgruntled with Paul in a sense because they were so, remember, the Corinthians were so puffed up. What was Paul's occupation? Tent. A lowly tent maker, okay? A lowly tent maker, right? They were so high-minded and puffed up, they were looking at that like, come on, just a tent maker, all right? But understand, Paul was using his liberty to go work, Okay, he was able to work and get wages so he did not have to be chargeable to them because his main goal for them was the gospel that fruit may abound to his account. That was the whole key, okay? All right, now, let's go back, look at verse 11. Let's go back here and break this down a little. If we have sown unto you spiritual things, is it a great thing if we shall reap your what? Hmm. Carnal things. Let's go turn with me to uh, Romans 15. Go to Romans 15. Let's look at this. Look at verse 25. Romans 15, verse 25. You have it? Yes. Mm -hmm. All right. But now I go into Jerusalem to minister unto the who? Saints. Saints. For it had pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints, which are at where? Jerusalem. It had pleased them verily, and their debtors they are, 
For if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister unto them in what? Carnal. In carnal things, right? Now, let's go back to this. Verse 25, Paul says, I go into Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. And then he says, to, he's going to make a contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. Okay, now, what is this? What explain? What is Paul saying here in these verses? They are, twenty-five and twenty-six. They put all this stuff into the one combined, and they're losing money now because they haven't left yet. Right, right. Remember now. Uh, let's go back to Acts two real quick. Keep Romans fifteen. We're going to go back to Acts two real quick to see what Paul is talking about. Okay. Now remember Israel. All right. Remember the rich young ruler. The uh, when when uh, he said, "What must I do to enter into the kingdom?" And Jesus says, "To do all the commandments." He said, "I've done all of those." And then he says, "To do to uh, to do what? Sell all, Sell all you have." And then it says he left weak, sorrowful because he had what much possessions. Okay. All right. So understand, they had to sell all they had and become a common wealth. All right. Ephesians 20, 11, uh, verse twelve says, "We're strangers from the common wealth of Israel." Okay. But they had to bring all things together to, to form a common wealth and the apostles would divvy it out as they saw fit because they were getting ready to what? Go through the tribulation. So they didn't need a bunch of stuff. That's why when it says it's harder for a what? Rich man to enter into the heaven therefore the eye, the, the, the camel to pass through the eye of a needle. Okay? Because again and during the tribulation they won't be able to what? Buy and sell. So having a bunch of money and a bunch of property and possessions won't help you out there. Mm. So that's why he dated a common wealth so that the, the apostles could divvy it out until it was time for them to go through that tribulation. Then God would, 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 they, they would, he would hide them in the cleft of the rock as Psalms talks about, and he would do that. But So remember, this was the case. Go to Acts 2 and look at verse 42. So by the time you get to Romans, okay, which would have been right around Acts 19, 20, okay? The kingdom had not come. Right. So now, if everybody sold all he had and was had a common wealth, by now it would have what? Ran out. Yeah, right. Now, since God changed the program, mm -hmm. he graciously had Paul mm -hmm. and his ministries and his ministers to, to partake in the Israel's the carnal things because they didn't have any more money. They did what God asked them to do and Ananias and Sapphire in Acts 5 when they withheld some of the stuff they got what? Killed. So it was a serious thing. Okay, look at Acts 2 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and fellowship and in breaking of bread and in prayers. Okay, and fear came upon every soul and many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. Oh, and, and again, this is after Pentecost, okay? Look, first of all, let me just say this while we're here. It says they continue steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine, okay? The apostles' doctrine brought fear, and many wonders and what? Signs were done by the who? Apostles, okay? Paul says in 1 Corinthians 1, for the Jews require a what? Sign. So this is not the body of Christ in this, Okay? Look at verse 44. And all that believed were together and had all things what? Common. 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 And sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men as every man had what? Need. Need. So anybody that wants to be uh, is spiritual Israel, as they say, want to be grafted in and we're spiritual Israel and all this, that's not accurate. Uh, the body of Christ is the body of Christ. Spirit, Israel is Israel. There is no such thing as spiritual Israel. The Bible doesn't speak about that. Israel is Israel. The body of Christ is the body of Christ. Now, understand now, it's, nobody today is giving all their possessions to the apostle or whoever this guy up here thinks he is, okay? Nobody is giving all their possessions to him and having a common wealth. Nobody is willing to, nobody is even willing to do that. Okay? Uh, uh, now, some people might be uh, brainwashed enough to do that, okay? But most people aren't going for that now. We don't mind, you know, being deceived enough to pay, give you all our money, but we don't give you all our possessions and everything, too. You know, some people, some people are going to draw the line somewhere, all right? So understand, when it comes to this, that's what they were to do, though. 
they were to entrust the apostles with all possessions. Notice it says, and sold their possessions and goods and parted them to all men. Now, uh, 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 and they continued with daily with one accord in the temple, breaking from house to house, did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart. Now, yes. Okay, let us remember that that's a, a little plot before it was 100 and just 120 people. Because at verse 40, you can see that they just had baptized 3,000 to add to that number that were already there. Uh -huh. So that's yep. a lot of people to feed. Right, right, right. It's not uh, 120 where we could have just maybe made it. Right, right, right. We're right. talking three, 4,000 people to feed right. out of that. That go fast. Right, right, right. That's a lot. And, and understand, that's why everybody had to bring what they had because it would create a common wealth and then everybody could uh, partake as they needed to. Uh, and again, that was only supposed to last, okay, until probably Acts 7, because that would have been the year of restitution in which they were supposed to repent and, 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 and see Christ. Uh, so Christ should have, would have been coming back. The tribulation would have started and he would have come back. And then, you know, he would, he would have been able to provide for them during the tribulation. And then he would have uh, 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 proceeded to save them out of the great tribulation. Okay, and so again, that didn't happen because God changed the program with Paul. So now Paul, all right, and those Gentiles that he ministered to is going to partake, all right, to help these saints, at, poor saints at Jerusalem out. Uh -huh. And those poor saints didn't work then either. Right, right. They didn't that's need to work. What, yeah, yeah, that's yeah. what people forget. They didn't bring, they weren't bringing in money by working right, like they right. normally would right. because what was supposed to start. Right. The tribulation was supposed to go, and then they would receive their kingdom, uh, and Christ was supposed to come back. Uh, but since it didn't, God changed the program. Uh, God understands. Uh, he has all things together. He understands all things. Uh, even though he changed the program, he did not forsake the saints at Jerusalem because he had told them to do this. But since they continued to reject him, he changed the program, decided to usher grace and, uh, as a dispensation and salvation to all men, not just to the Jew. All right, but he now he's going to provide for them. He's still not going to forsake them, even though he's put their program on hold. He's not forsaking them as far as their natural things. Okay, all right. Now go back to Romans uh, 15. So, Pastor, is that where that scripture come in that they say blindness in part has happened to Israel until the fullness of the Gentiles become in? Yeah, to some degree. Romans eleven twenty five. Yes, uh, that yeah. Uh, Paul says, uh, "Let us not be ignorant of this mystery." Uh, yeah, uh, in Romans <laughs> eleven twenty five. So, yes, in a sense, but that gen the fullness of the Gentiles is not us as the body of Christ. Right. The fullness of the Gentiles, because remember now, the Gentiles would be saved by Israel. Mm -hmm. Okay, so there there is going to be a fullness of Gentiles in their program as well. Mm -hmm. that, so that's what that's speaking about. Yeah. Yeah, I remember what we were talking about? This what question just popped into my head. Mm -hmm. We're talking about 7,000, 8,000 people who were saved. What about the other Israelis, the other Jews that lived in Jerusalem? All those weren't saved, were they? Right, yeah, all of those. And that's yeah. where the, the opposite branch comes in to me. Well, no, because there was a, there, the nat, there's natural branches, whether they <laughs> were saved or not, they're still considered natural branches because they were yeah, they were still part of, of the, the seed of, 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 yeah. of, of, of Jacob. Okay, uh, the, when it, the, the Romans eleven talks about the wild olive tree. Yes, that's okay. the part I'm trying those to are, right. those were the Gentile proselytes. They were wild in nature, which yeah, means they weren't they natural. Know, they didn't know. Right, right. All right. Uh, yeah, that Romans 11 is, is a hard verse, a hard <laughs> chapter, okay, uh, because, it, because it uses the word Gentiles, but yeah. people want to throw the body of Christ. Romans 9, 10, and 11, Paul is speaking about Israel's past, present, and future. So there will be Gentiles in the kingdom, okay? There will be Gentiles who partake of Israel's kingdom because Israel is going to be the one to teach them. Mm -hmm. That's when, when the so-called Great Commission that so people talk about, yeah. that's when it's going to really happen out there. We have a greater commission today, okay? All right, uh, look at Romans 15. All right, so for that, please, never Macedonia, Achaia, to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. All right, so now, it, verse 27, Romans 15, it had pleased them verily, and their dead as they are, for if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, how have the Gentiles been made partakers of their spiritual things? Grace. Huh? 
Grace. Okay, grace. Their duty is also to minister unto them in what? Carnal things. And carnal things. Okay, let's go to a couple verses here. All right. Go to Ephesians 3. Go to Ephesians 3. So again, Paul is using these verses to these Jews in 1 Corinthians to speak about these issues, okay? About, is it such a great thing for us to reap your carnal things because we have sown to you spiritually? Look at this. Ephesians 3, look at verse 6. That the Gentiles should be what? Fellow heirs. Fellow heirs and of the same body and partakers of his promise in Christ by what? The by the gospel, okay? By the gospel. So understand now, this is how Gentiles partake of Israel's spiritual thing. They, Christ initially came for the lost sheep of the house of Israel, all right? But now he's extended to all people, both Jew and Gentile, all right? In the body of Christ, okay? So understand that. Go to Colossians chapter 1. Look at verse 12, Colossians 1, verse 12. We have it. Mm -hmm. All right, giving thanks unto the Father, which had made us meet to be what? Partakers, Partakers of the inheritance of the saints in what? Light. In light. Okay, so, so again, uh, go to Titus real quick. Thank you. Look at verse 1. Right. Titus chapter 1. Verse 1. Paul, a servant of God and an apostle of Jesus Christ, according to the faith of God's elect, and the acknowledging of the truth which is after godliness, and hope of eternal life, which God that cannot lie promised before what? The world before began. the world began. So there was hope in, in the body of Christ, us being members of the body of Christ, not that God chose each individual member, but he set aside the body of Christ even before, as the Ephesians says, before the foundation of the world so that those who accept Christ's sacrifice are now inputted by righteousness into this body in which they receive all of these blessings of eternal life that God promised before the world began. All right? That's why we can get salvation as a present possession because God pr promised it before the world began. Again, when people talk about predestination, okay, he didn't promise the individual salvation. He promised the body of Christ. Okay? The individual members who accept Christ's sacrifice are now a member of that body which was founded before the foundation of the world. Okay? All right? Go back to uh, uh, 1 Corinthians 9. Where did you send us first, Justine? Acts. I went to Acts, then Romans 15. No, what, Romans 15? Titus. Uh, no, before. Oh, Ephesians 3 6. You talking about before Titus? Yeah. Yeah, Ephesians 3 6. Because I saw something I wanted to look at again. Yeah, Ephesians 3 and 6. And then Colossians 1 and 12 also. It would be Colossians, but I think it's Ephesians. Yeah. Because it said the promise of Christ. It did not say the promise of Abraham. Right, right, right. That's what I was thinking. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, because we don't receive the promise of Abraham. Paul was just using it as an example to show how Abraham received his righteousness in uncircumcision right. before any work, before anything else. Uh, we don't receive the promise of Abraham, okay, but we're blessed like Abraham. Yes, okay, yes. that's also through Christ. Right, through absolutely. Yeah. That's what that word was. Yeah. Because we were talking about the promises of Abraham. Right, right. But it just showed to us that the promise of Christ is through the promise of Christ. Right. Everything we receive is through Christ, not through right. any covenant, not through any law, any law any not through man. yeah, not through any man other than Christ. Right. Got yeah. it. Thank you. Yeah. Look at First Corinthians nine. All right. Look at verse twelve. <clears throat> Look at 
1 Corinthians 9, verse 12. If others be partakers of this power over you, are not we rather? You see that? Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, we have not used this power. You don't, he didn't have, they didn't have to use the power, okay? We didn't use this power, but suffer all things lest we should hinder the what? Right. So we have the power to charge you based on the spiritual things that we're, we're sowing unto you. You have the duty to okay. reap unto us the carnal things at least, all right? We have that power and that duty, but we're using liberty not to do it because we don't want to hinder the gospel of Christ. Paul actually wanted for things. But it says he did what? He suffered, suffered all Lord. things for their sakes. Mm -hmm. And yet they turn right around, okay, and doubt his apostleship. I was listening on the way in, and uh, that reminded me of the conversation me and Coach was having earlier. So is that, does that show, like, the humility that Christ had, that Paul had, uh, that we should have, and that Christ, in his circumstance, could have invoked his authority, who right. he was, mm -hmm. right. and stopped all of that. Right. 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 Um, Paul, in many instances, could have just put his foot down and told people who he really was right. to stop all that questioning and, 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 and skepticism people had about him, but instead, he never did that. Right, right. So I was telling him, like, sometimes in my, in my marriage, like, I throw up, I'm the head. Right, right. I shouldn't need to do that. Right, 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 right. right. Yeah, don't so do that. I'm telling you, I felt don't like that. I did. You know, this is when I do that. That's pride to me. Right, right, right. right. But right. Christ never got puffed up in his pride. Right, right. And Paul didn't get puffed up enough in his pride. Right. To tell him who he was. Right, right, really. right. Uh, and you only use it as an example. Right, right. Well, yeah. and, and, and again, you shouldn't have to do that, okay? Because again, the reason people feel like they have to do that, okay? Is because they've been cut somewhere, okay, whatever the, the this, this situation is, whether it be marriage, whether it be I'm the boss of a job, you feel like somebody's offended you to a point where you feel like you got to retaliate. Because the only reason you have to say I'm the head or I'm the boss or, you know, this my house or anything like that is because you, you feel like you have to uh, uh, defend yourself because somebody has offended you. Okay, and so I run out of, run out of patience because sometimes certain decisions I don't feel like I have time for bureaucracy. Right, right. Sometimes right. I just got to make an executive decision. Right, right, right. <laughs> right. But, but Christ, I mean, time was at hand for him. Right, 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 right. But he didn't. Right, right, and, and and again, when we when we lead, okay, properly, again, marriage, Paul, Jesus, whoever, whomever it may be, all right. When you make the decision that needs to be made, it won't be questioned. If you are leading the right way, okay. Uh, again, when look at the, the the two thieves on the cross, okay. Uh, the man that was on the gateway of heaven actually went to hell. The guy that was on the gateway to hell actually went to heaven, okay. Because the one that was on the gateway to hell didn't ask no questions. All right. The other one was like, well, shoot. If you who you say you are, get us, get yourself down of there, get us down off of here, okay. The other one was like, listen. Whatever, whoever you say you are, just hey, don't, just remember me, okay? He just took it, took it for face value, yeah. okay? Because again, he understood true authority don't mean he had to use it to prove himself. You see that? Yeah. Uh, and so again, you don't have to use it to prove yourself. But when you make the decision, Christ made a decision to humble himself and sit there and just take it. Yeah. But this one guy was like, yeah, I mean. He probably was thinking, I wouldn't take it, but I believe you. You know, I believe whatever you said, just remember me. Okay. And he said, you know, and he would remember it in that kingdom. Yeah. So understand, you don't always have, but, but again, when you say things like that, it's always because you feel like somebody's offended you. Yeah. Okay? That's, that's the whole key. And again, that is, that is pride. Uh, because again, a lot of times when people do something to you, all right, it, it always is that, it, it always that, the issue of who they think they talking to. Yes, sir. When you ask yourself that, okay, all right, that question could go both ways, okay? Because yeah. right, you're, you're asking that as if you want people to know your reputation from a natural standpoint, yeah. okay, which is pride. Uh, however, when you can ask yourself that question, and as Paul says, to examine yourself, who they think they're talking to? Yeah, a nobody. 
Because without Christ, I'm what? Nothing. nothing. Right. And if they try Christ, then surely they're going to try you. Mm -hmm. That's okay. the parallel I was yeah. making. Right. I, I'll admit that. Right, you know, right. That's, that's the parallel I always get get faced with in a mirror looking back at myself. Right. Mm -hmm. Like, Paul never stepped down on these people and told right. them who they think they're talking to. Jesus didn't either. Right. And, and that's he, it. Was, he was telling them exactly dead right. Right. His infinite wisdom given that given that ministry that nobody else was giving. Right. He knew better than what they was talking about. Right. And, that. and that's the thing. A lot of times when you know yourself to be right, you don't always have to prove that. Right, okay. Because sometimes people not going to... When you understand that people will only see things from their perception, that'll stop you from getting into a lot of arguments. Because yeah. sometimes people only see it from their perception. Yeah. And perception becomes what? Reality. Yeah. So if they only see it from their perception, then there's no need for me to even talk to them. Okay, I, I was talking to a, 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 per, a, a person who replied on the, a, a, a post that I made uh, the other day, uh, and the post that I made was talking about entertainment. I said, if these verses are true, talking about uh, 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 Christ, if these uh, faith and Hebrews 11 and 6 and Romans 10 and 17, if these verses are true, all right, why is it that people rather people want entertainment as opposed to doctrine? Okay, and some guy was on the time. Yeah, but we need to we need to worship though the music and all that. And so I proceeded to tell her, well, what is worship? Because he says we need to usher in the spirit. I, and I just you know said, what well, what spirit are you speaking of? Because the spirit that I have it comes with me because it's in me. And then I posted in the scriptures to where the spirit dwells in us. Yeah. Uh, then he proceeded to say, yeah, I understand that. I'm not debating that, but but I think the music, in my opinion, the music is you know. So when he said, in my opinion, I just left the conversation alone. Okay. Because, again, I've shown you the scriptures, but you still want to say, in your opinion. Okay, so, again, he's, that's how he sees that. That's fine. Okay, so, but the scripture is going to be the scripture. Your opinion, now, again, I wanted to say, well, who really cares about your opinion? Mm -hmm. uh, but, 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 again, I just left the conversation alone. Okay, uh, because, again, that's how he sees it. Okay, so it didn't affect me. Yeah, that's how he sees it. That's fine. Look, bro, I'm a pastor. Yeah, like, that, yeah right. Be doing that, right? Exactly. Yeah, that would be an example. I could have came back and said, "Listen, I'm a pastor. I know what I'm talking about. You don't know what you're talking about." Yeah. That could that would have been the wrong way to handle it. That's it. That's a perfect example of that. Yeah. yeah. And I just want to say, man, shout out to the homie for being honest about that. Right, right, right. right. And, and, and and thank God that we're in a space where you can have that level of humility <laughs> and just say that. Just come out and say that. Mm -hmm. Because anybody who's been married has been right there. Right, right. And some of us occasionally still there might be tomorrow. <laughs> right, 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 right. But I was gonna say, you know, the reality is that feeling is not toxic. Right, right. It just needs to be channeled. Right. Because right. at my house I'm the head. But let me finish that statement. I'm the head servant. Right. I'm the head right. merciful person. Right, right, I'm the right. head grace giver. That's right. I'm right, the, right. You know, right, so right. it's, it's, it's yeah, all good exactly. being the head. Right. And and I don't think there's anything even wrong with proclaiming that. But I'm gonna be the head as Christ would. Right. Or even right. as Paul example. followed. Right. Because right. Paul was the head sufferer. He right. was gonna right. go into jail and suffer. Right, right. So yeah, if you're gonna be the head, and a lot of times from a male perspective, we don't want to be that kind of head. Right, right, right. We want to be the kind of head to call out shots oh, yeah. and reap the benefits. Right, we don't right, want yeah. to be the head like Christ was. Right, right. And, and again, it says for Christ to love your wife, uh, uh, for Christ, for, for husbands to love your wives as Christ loved the church. And then it, it says he, and, and he even gave himself for it. So not only did he love, but he showed that. So when you claim to be the head, you have to show that, okay? Yeah. That's why a lot of times when I talk to women and they call me about their husbands or something like that, I always tell them, okay, <clears throat> uh, 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 well, even well, men or vice versa, I always explain to them, you have to show them that love. And I always tell the women, make your husband feel like he's the head, mm -hmm. all right? So if there's a problem, show him this verse and explain to him, <laughs> He ought to be the head, but the head ought to be a follower of Christ. That's how you get your husband, okay? Mm -hmm. uh, so, again, you, you can do it both ways. But, yeah, you, you don't want to claim, proclaim something and do the very opposite of what you're trying to proclaim, okay? Uh, but, again, you know, uh, uh, when we have that, and, again, yeah, 
a lot of people have those feelings. If you've been married before, you've had a feeling where you feel like, listen, you know, I'm going to call these shots. I don't care what you're talking about. Okay, so, again, it's not always the right way to be, but we've all we've all been there, okay? Uh -huh. yeah, but see, what we lose sight of in this verse here is that Paul's needs are already being taken care of. The people from Macedonia oh, right. are sending him stuff to take care of that. Right. So he would so not he be charged have to be them. charging them. Right. For that. Right. The key to it is that he could, but it's more important that they get the gospel right. than he get the carnal. Right, right. It's not expedient to do that. Right, right. Yeah, and, it's, and, it's and, so and especially bad. with this bunch, with the current with the Corinthians, because yeah. they were so carnal and puffed yeah. up. Now, there is instances, as Jesus did, where he overthrew the money changes, okay? Yeah. There are instances now right. where you, you, you got to put your foot down and do not compromise the gospel, yes, okay? Sir. There are instances like that, okay? But even in that, his intent, his, he still was humble in what he did. Yes, sir. But it needed to be done because he says, you've made my father's house a den of thieves, okay? So that needed to be done, all right? And I just love what he said about being the head servant, right, right. the head example. Right, right, you know? right. And if I think if we just, and I find myself every day when I get into different situations, I'm more apt now and quick to say, well, what would God do? Right, what right. would Jesus do? But right, see, we like to intellectualize everything. You know, we that's that human side of us, right, you know. Right. We got to... Show what we know, and right, right. but if we spend more time asking ourselves, well, what would God do in this situation, or just be humble enough just to lay back for a minute, right. like my husband. Now, most of the time, when he gets angry about something, but I know with the kids, he did a lot. He wouldn't get right at them when he was angry. He'd wait, and he'd have them walking around eggshells because they right. didn't know what he was going to do. Right, you right. know, so they was messed up. Right. Because they don't, they should have suffered punishment right, right. at the time that the act was committed. But right. he laid back. He laid back. Now when he came, he brought he brought the rod. Now he didn't he right. didn't the rod, but I'm just saying he made they walked around on eggshells right. right. because they didn't know how he was gonna react to what the wrong that they know they right. had committed. Right. So right. I think if we spent more time to stop trying to intellectualize all these situations and right. show how, you know. Well, and, and again, that's what Paul is trying to deal with them. He's showing them the authority, then he's showing them his lifestyle, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, so again, a lot of times believers, most religious people think that we're teaching people to be saved by grace and then live any kind of way you want. We don't teach that. Mm -hmm. You ought to be living what you believe, okay? You ought to be doing the same thing. So again, not it's not you're not going to be perfect don't no. condemn yourself mm -hmm. because there's no condemnation to the, those of us who are in christ mm -hmm. uh, but our everyday life you ought to be getting the more you okay. start and again the only way to actually change your behavior as i started out with is to change the what the mind mm -hmm. through the word mm -hmm. faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god so the more we study the word the more our faith increases mm -hmm. the more our faith increases now it's no longer i that live it but what Christ that liveth in me. Mm -hmm. So now, because I have the mind of Christ, I begin to handle certain situations mm -hmm. as Christ would handle them. Amen. Why? Because I have the mind of Christ. But if I don't know the word, okay, then I won't have that strength to handle the situation properly. All right? When people do something to me, vengeance is mine, said the Lord. I remember the scripture, so I don't have to, I don't have to avenge myself. Exactly. You see that? So the more I understand the scripture, the more faith I have in what God is saying to me, mm -hmm. all right, the more my action ought to follow. All right? Well, I was just going to say that Paul, um, he was really teaching them through that. Right. Because he could see them. Right. He could see their hearts. Right. And and it's like he took money from the other people. The other people sent him money, and, mm -hmm. and, and, and we know that he still had needs. But he wanted those Corinthians. He was teaching them. Right. Uh, and and it, and I, I would imagine, I know, you know, it doesn't go into it per se, but that they had another, they had a different kind of respect when they really went through it mm -hmm. right, right, with right, him. Right, so they, right. they, they could see. The authority of Paul. Right. That he could what he could have done, but what he didn't, didn't do. Right. And sometimes in the home, a man have authority to do something, but that woman respect what you didn't, didn't do. Right, right, absolutely. And so it, it brings a different respect for him. Right. Like, you know, I you know, I went off, he could have he could have 
you know, lost his mind. Right. You know, got all upset. But he did. Right, he right, said, right. I'm going to let you, I'm going to let you yeah, rest. Right, you right, know, right. Whatever. Exactly. So it's certain times when you can show more right, when right. you restrain yourself. Right, more. right. Mm. And Paul, he does that several times in Scripture, right? Doesn't he do that when he's talking about boasting too? Yeah. He's saying, yeah. I, could, I could boast. boast. Right, right, yeah. right. Yeah. 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 Philippians 3, yeah. Philippians 3, that's what Paul is talking about. If anybody yeah. has to wear up the glory in the flesh, surely I more. Yeah. And then he begins to give these qualifications of his natural fleshly things. Mm -hmm. Born the eighth day of the tribe of the stock of Benjamin. Mm -hmm. Circumcised the eighth day. Okay? He was uh, uh, the Pharisee of Pharisees. After naming those things, then he says what? But I count all these things as what? Dumb. Dumb. Which means they mean nothing. But mm -hmm. if you really want to go there, we can take it there. <laughs> right? But I'm going to bring you back. I'm only saying that to bring you here. A lot of times we'll say all of that, but leave it there. Yeah. Okay, we don't bring them back. Okay, we'll say all of that. Now, if you really want to glory, now, I don't play the NFL. I got this, I got that. But if you're just saying that to gloat and to boast, mm -hmm. and you don't bring them back to say all of that means nothing to me. Mm -hmm. You see that? Yeah, yeah. For example, because I know um, once Coach Reed started working, we started working together at Slide. And he'll tell you so many, we had so many uh, cases like that to where when people will find out, oh, you highly affected, I heard this and that. And same thing about Coach Reed, but because we was humble, right. we, we would say things like, oh, yeah, we can, you know, get this and this or whatever. Right. And those people are more open to receive the gospel right. or to even be further into the gospel because right. they're looking like, I know this, y'all don't bash the kids in. You don't write as me to refer as you should do, or you don't walk around with your chest all up and high and mighty. You keep your door closed, you stay to yourself, you talk right. only good things about people in position. Right, so right. that opened the door to say, That's man, right. I know y'all can be promoted higher than this. Right. But because of the simple fact that you're not in it for that. Right. You know, and they are more open. So so I tell me and coach, we just to teach us and everybody, we just we are able to freely give the gospel. Right, and, right. and just to share this story as well, even with a, um, with a young young man that uh, Coach Reed piss him, pick him up more than I do because he's still outside of town. This kid was counting out. Right. And, and, and now he know Coach Reed, he will get paid to go to the weight room. But we tell him, look, man, it's people that get paid to be here and want them to take you to the weight room. But because we love you so much, we'll suffer and stay here, right. not get paid, and still work you out for high school. Right, so right. now this kid wants to change his life right, all right. because of right, the right. attention that right, coach, right. mainly Coach Reed is giving him. Right, right. You know, so right. I understand what Paul talks like this. Right, right. Because it makes you feel it more. It's like, right. wow, man, you don't have to, but you did it. Right, You right, know, so right. it ain't business at this point. It's love. Right, it's right. Right. And, 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 you know, and, and speaking from a natural perspective with teachers, okay, Teachers don't get paid what they ought to get paid, okay? Now, but you know when they get paid, and I remember a teacher told me this. Uh, when I went back to my high school after I was, you know, even when I was in the NFL, I used to always go back to my high school, and one teacher said, man, you know, this is why I teach. Mm -hmm. To see a success story like yourself, this is why. So, uh, so again, they don't do it for the, the, the ones who actually are trying to help the kids, mm -hmm. okay? Uh, they're not doing it for the money. Like you said, they're doing it for, for the, 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 who they, what they can build up. Amen. It's the same way with us. We're not teaching and doing this just so we can say we know more than somebody else. Mm -hmm. Okay, we're doing this so we can be an effective, amb effective ambassadors for Christ. Amen. Okay, that's why we're doing this. So again, we don't want to become the offense, all right? We want the word to be the offense. All right, we don't want to get in the way of the gospel by whatever means necessary, whether that be not charging people for the gospel. Because, again, like I told you, I've heard preachers say, listen, well, I don't mind coming to your church to preach, but I'm going to need, I'm gonna need at least $50,000 to, to even just come to the church. And then that's not even including my entourage. Okay, so you mean to tell me all of that, the, the free gospel, Okay, can't be taught to people who really want it because you need fifty thousand dollars and an entourage. Okay, come on, man, that's just ridiculous. Okay, but people feel that like they're so special to God that God they need this money to preach the gospel. It's free. Okay, it's free. All right. And then these people, you you call, ask them a question, you can't get in touch with them. You know, you can't, you don't know, you can't even hear from them. Okay. 
Uh, but again, we have to understand that humility that we have to have because again, we're not doing any of this for ourselves. We're Amen. doing this for the glory for the glory of God. Amen. You see that? You know, just this past year, me and my girlfriend, um, she said, hey, by the way. Um, yeah, tell me. <laughs> <laughs> like, you know, we grew up in the traditional church. Uh -huh. You know, music and all that stuff. So, like, we had not been because we just, that's just the part of church that we just don't get here. Mm -hmm. It's the traditional side. Mm -hmm. know, music and all that, seeing people like, you know, praise God. Right, right. So, <clears throat> but, like I was telling her that, I don't like going to those churches because no matter man, we probably went to so many churches past year. Yeah. And every day we walked in, it felt like a business. Right, mm -hmm. right, right, and right, right. Just, you know, this you say, you know, humility. Paul could have did this, which is true. Right. You know, Reed and Cortez, they could do what they, you know, they right. can say, "Oh, I do this, which is true." Right, right. You know, you can say what you can say. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but yeah. You go to these churches. I don't know. When the last time I've been one to the churches. <laughs> yeah. And they do that. Right, they do it. They yeah. do that. Yeah. Right, 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 right. And, yeah. and, yeah. and, yeah. and, and honestly, like, yeah. people, like, I, I get frustrated how people don't know about right. how you how you deliver the word. Right, you right, know? right. People right. are stuck. They, I mean, literally, they yeah. like, oh, Pastor, you did wonderful today. Mm. And he'll, he'll, his response will basically be like, I know. <laughs> mm, I and I mean, we done been to a lot of yeah, them. Yeah. Shit. Yeah. Right. I tell her, I tell her like, nah, I don't like it. Right, I right. Tell her, I, don't like, I don't like this church. I don't like this right, church. Right, right, right. The moment I hear just yeah. something that ain't sticking to yeah. like what the gospel is, like, now nah, I'm straight. Right, I right. go back. Right, right. <laughs> and, and, and you know, and, and the sad part about it is that the. It's, it's crazy. The sad part about it is how quickly the victim becomes the perpetrator. Most of these pastors are people who grew up in these churches, mm -hmm. probably didn't right. understand the business of it, didn't like it, but now that they've become that, mm. now they're doing the same thing. Mm -hmm. And so, and so again, uh, and, and it's again, it's, it's a part of the people being ignorant of God's truth, because if you're ignorant, that's how you can be controlled, okay? So because you're ignorant of the word, you think the pastor did such a great job because of, because of the, the delivery. It's right. never about the delivery or the style. It's about the content, mm -hmm. okay? And, and people get so caught up in the entertainment aspect of it. Because I could have you, I could have you jumping off the ceilings now. I know how to do that, okay? Mm -hmm. I used to do that, okay? I could have you bouncing off the walls in here. But again, if I'm not actually teaching you nothing to edify, mm -hmm. then you're going to go right back out there and live the way you've always lived because there's yeah. no mindset change. Yeah. The word is the only thing that can change you, Amen. all right? What he just said, wouldn't uh, Romans uh, 16 and 17 apply? Absolutely. Uh, uh, but when Paul talks about for those who... Uh, 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 who teach contrary to the doctrine which we have taught, okay? Uh, they said they, they uh, teach... They, they, it says they deceive with fair words and fair speeches, deceive the hearts of the simple. Mm -hmm. And he says, mark them and avoid them. Mm -hmm. That's exactly That's what it says, saying. okay? Uh, mark them. As a matter of fact, that scripture is what really made me understand that I wasn't going to be at my old church anymore. Because mm -hmm. I, I, I would have never thought about leaving because I love the pastor, I love those people. Uh, but when I read that verse, as as, as the, I began to come into understanding the right doctrine, I knew I was going to be out of here soon. Okay, so so and so that so that was so again, yeah, that that verse Romans 16, 16 17 and eighteen. All right, that's exactly what what, that, what you we ought to mark them and then avoid them. Absolutely. Pastor, I just want that brother back there to know to uh -huh. tell. He stated they have been to several churches this year. Uh -huh. Just let your girlfriend know that when she comes through the door, we go sing songs and pray for her, and she can praise God. <laughs> see, now she would have something to praise God for because she's getting the true right. word of God in this dispensation. So let her know we gonna sing praises when she comes through that door. Um, when he just says um, Romans sixteen to seventeen, uh -huh. um, verse sixteen talks about. Um, the churches of Christ. Right, right, right. And I've met a couple people that go to Church of Christ right, and right, they right, believe right. that the Church of Christ is the church. Right, no, no, no. So when, not, yeah. <laughs> yeah, when he says the churches of Christ, he's just talking about churches that are in Christ. Right. Not a particular the denomination of people. That right, they right. really believe that that denomination is the chosen denomination. Right, right, right. Everybody right, right, else. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. 
that yeah, that that's not again. That's that's cherry picking a verse and not mm-hmm. understanding the context. The churches of Christ are those churches who are in what Christ. Christ. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's so, the doctrine oh. would be the gospel of Christ. Right? Absolutely. And that's yeah. only would be uh, 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 taught by Paul, the Apostle Paul. Right. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. All right. Look at this. Let's see what the first Corinthians here. We'll finish up. All right. Look at First Corinthians nine. All right, and I'll cover all of this another time. But look at this. Look at verse 13. Do ye not know that they which minister about holy things live of the things of the temple, and they which wait at the altar are partakers with the altar? Even so hath the Lord ordained that they which preach the gospel should what? Live of the gospel. This is ordained, but it's not through tithing and deceit and robbing people, okay? Mm-hmm. There, are more, there are more crooks in the pulpit than in the penitentiary, okay? Uh, because understand now, because it's become a business, all right? It's become such a business, all right? People selling books, throw a few verses in there, put my name on the front, because if you're going to sell a book, you should, the author should be God, okay? Amen. Not yourself, okay? Uh, uh, but again, but people do all of these things, okay? All right? But because they read verses like this, but again, the, what gospel are they preaching? Because it says those that, those that even so God who ordained, had, had already ordained, they which preach the gospel now, mm-hmm. not this gospel of the kingdom and putting people under the law of tithing and all of that, but the right gospel, those are the people that ought to do what? Live of the gospel, okay? All right, now, look at verse 15. But I have used what? Mm-hmm. None of these things, okay? None of these things. Neither, and, and, and you know what? People are, are, are so financially strained. When you tell them about tithing, that ought, that ought to free them, okay? Because you don't have to be obligated to give all your money to this church. Because again, God operates the church today based on gracious, gracious gifts of his saints, which means that by grace, what's purpose in your heart? If you don't have it, don't give it. Somebody else will purpose it in their heart and they will give it. Okay? So again, there's no obligation. If you don't have money to give to the church, you're not gonna be condemned and you're not gonna be blessed if you give it. Okay? What you're doing is just help to further the gospel or the ministry, all right, as it's purpose in your heart. So let him give, okay? Not grudgingly of necessity, but God loves a cheerful giver. Okay, so that's how you give. If you don't have it, don't feel bad. All right? If you don't, because somebody else will have it. That's how God operates today, by mm-hmm. grace. If you don't have it, trust me, somebody else will. Amen. Back here, they had to have it because he gave them the land. So they had it. They had the tithe to pay the tithe. Okay? Today, some you, you, people are, are, are strained financially. That's okay. I tell people all the time now, okay? And, and it's sad that this happens to people is that they will pay the church and, and, and get their lights cut off, water, because they ain't paid their bills at home. Jesus. That don't make any sense. Jesus. And some of these churches got all this money and people without lights. Jesus. And all of a sudden, they won't even throw it back. Though. Right, right. <laughs> right, right. And they put it up in the newest beans. Right, right, right. And the wife got the newest beans. Right, right, right. They won't even throw it back. Right, right. <laughs> and what's crazy is people go to church on Sunday, lights are still be on yeah. right. and still pay time. Right, 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 right. Yeah. And, and, and the pastor know it, it, ta- it still take it. Still, yeah, yeah. And, and, and again, still take it. That's what Paul is saying. He's saying, I have done, look at verse 15, he didn't use it. He didn't take it. Although he had the authority, he didn't take it. Right? Neither have I written these things that it should be so done unto me, for it were better for me to die than any man should make my glory in what? Void. void. He would rather die for you to talk about him doing these things. That's why he didn't do it, because the gospel was way more important to him. And as we get down to verse 16 and 17, we're going to get down to that. But real quick, go to Galatians 6. Galatians 6 and verse 6. Galatians 6 and verse 6. We have it? Mm-hmm. All right. Let him that is taught in the word, not in emotions, not in feelings, but taught in the what? Word. word. Communicate, okay? This is to communicate in this context is to share, okay? Communicate unto him that teaches in all what? Good, Good things. Again, these are verses, as Paul is speaking, 
pastors that are teaching the right way have the authority to receive. Mm -hmm. Because if you're teaching the gospel, if I'm sowing unto you the spiritual things, okay, then to take care of my carnal things should not be that big of a deal. Amen. But again, I'm, I don't receive a salary from the church, okay? I work. All right, so understand, but that's what Paul is saying. And these preachers are using this verse and then putting people back under the law of the tithing to make them obligated to give, but using this verse here. If you're not communicating or teaching the word, I'm not obligated to do anything for Amen. you. You see that? But again, most people are uh, uh, us mm -hmm. ignorant, and again, I don't mean that derogatorily, but ignorant in the fact that they just don't know the Bible because they don't read it, they don't study it. So they're being deceived to think that, oh, uh, 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 as David said, uh, when, when they were talking about David in the Old Testament, uh, 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 do the... Uh, Touch not God's anointing and do the prophet of no harm. People love to use that verse talking about pastors today. That ain't talking about nobody today, okay? That's not talking about anybody today, but people will use that so, oh, I can't talk bad about the pastor. Mm. Yeah, I ain't talking bad about the pastor. I'm talking bad about the wrong doctrine that he's teaching, Amen. okay? And that's the difference. We're not talking about people. We're talking about the doctrine. Amen. But people just take it personally. That's why when people attack me, I don't really, it ain't hurt me. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Well, I'm, I'm more worried about the gospel. Amen. And that becomes the issue. All right? Yes. Now, what really bothers me is that the tithing method turns people away from God by right. simply telling people that if you do this, God is going to do something greater for right. you. Right. And we know that that can't be. Right. And, and that becomes an issue because, again, people have a concept. And, and, and the Bible speaks about this, Isaiah 29, okay? Uh, the fear of God is being taught by the precepts of men, okay? And so the precepts of men are teaching people, as you say, uh, thinking. And so the concept of God, people think that God is a genie. If I just pray harder. I pray longer. If I give money to the church, if I pay the tithe, as they say, if I do these things, then God is going to do something for me. But that was here because they were under a performance-based acceptance system. Why? Because they were under a covenant with God. If they did good, God would do those things. But if they did bad, there was a curse that came along with it, too. People want to take all the good stuff, but don't want to take the other stuff. Okay? And so it becomes sad and unfortunate that if I tell you something, okay, that God is going to do for you. If God does not do it, why do people get mad at God as, as, rather than the person who just lied to them? You see that? People will value the man rather than more than they do God. Because they don't, they don't get mad at him because that's, that's, that's the man of God. But they would definitely get mad of God, at God. God, why you didn't do this? You said you would do it. Why you didn't do this? So, so again, it, it's, it's sad and unfortunate, but that's yes. that's the way it is. People are being deceived in that way. And the crazy, the craziest part about about that, about tithing. Let's say, let's say, you know what? You said before you can come up in here, you gotta wash the pastor's car before you get in. That's that's our religion. That's the way you do it. Yeah. You gotta wash the car to get in. And every time somebody come up here, they wash your car and they come on in praising the Lord. They feel like they done done the right thing that they were supposed to do to get in. Mm -hmm. You come up here one day and say, look, no more washing cars. We don't do that no more. Just come in. And the next time you come, you see somebody coming out there, they scrubbing the paint off your car with some kind of scaffold or something right. or a knife. Right. And you say, oh, I, I'm, I'm washing your car. I thought we were supposed to do that to get in. So not only are you doing something that we don't do no more, right. you're not even doing that right. Right, 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 right. right. So you're trying to tell right. people to tithe, yeah. giving, you know, giving something they shouldn't be giving. Right, right, right. Ain't nobody coming up in here with no goats or nothing right, like that. Right, right, right. Coming up here with money, you right. doing the wrong thing. Right, 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 right. 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 You, you're not even doing the you're not even doing the wrong thing the right way. Right. Right. Yeah. Those right. niggas on the working man. Right. <laughs> That's a good point. That's a good point. Uh, but but we'll we'll finish these verses up. Uh, we got a. Uh, for those of you who don't already know, my grandfather passed away this morning. Okay, so uh, I will be leaving. Uh, okay. Okay, I, I will be leaving on to, uh, uh, tomorrow, okay? So uh, I, I, I'm going to book a flight here when I leave here. But I'm going to be leaving tomorrow. I won't be here Sunday, okay? I won't be here Sunday, but 
Cortez is going to speak Sunday. Amen. So we will have Amen. service here. Now, the people online, we won't be streaming. Mm -hmm. Okay, but Cortez will be speaking on Sunday. Uh, so you guys come out and support him. Amen. Uh, I, and, and I'll be gone. So next Wednesday night is canceled because I won't be here. I'll be in Miami. Uh, and then this Sunday after that, uh, I have to I have to see I, I'm not sure yet okay so just be on the lookout for emails if we don't if you're not on the email list please give me your email so when we contact you about next Sunday I'll let you know okay uh, so but Cortez is going to speak on on um, Sunday. Sunday next Wednesday is going to be no service and then I'll let you guys know for next 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 Sunday okay uh, but again just uh, keep us in your prayers uh, uh, you all know how much my grandfather meant to me, uh, but I'm at peace. Okay, uh, I'm at peace with it, uh, and so, so I'll, I'll just pray for me because it, this is going to be a tough one, uh, just mainly because of uh, the things that uh, I have to do coming up. Okay, uh, as far as everything that's concerned. So uh, again, just pray for me. Uh, I appreciate those of you who have called and text. Uh, if anybody knows me. Uh, when things like this happen, I like to be to myself, okay? So uh, if you do call, you can call, I might answer, okay? But if I don't, don't get mad at me. I do appreciate it, okay? Mm -hmm. I, I just uh, deal with things a little differently. So I like mm -hmm. to just stay to myself. And, and my wife is really good because she knows when to bother me and when not to. So <laughs> I, I'm thankful for that. Uh, so, so, so again, uh, I, I really appreciate it. I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to get flooded with messages. I, I really, I'm saying it now, I really do thank you for your prayers and for your thoughts. Uh, I just got one. <laughs> I really do thank you for your prayers and your thoughts. If I don't get back to you right away, I'm saying it now, I do appreciate it. I may not answer the phone and I may not answer any texts, okay? Uh, so I just want you to know I'm not being hateful or I, this just is the way I deal with things. Uh, uh, but but just know I am at peace, okay? Uh, uh, I got a chance to say I am at peace, and so uh, but I'll, I'll, I'll grieve properly. I'll grieve the right way, uh, uh, and I'll allow myself some time to do that. But I'm gonna let you go now because I don't want to. I don't feel like crying now. Uh, so uh, we'll go and then we'll do that. So you guys come out and support Cortez on Sunday, all right? And then we'll. Uh, I'll let you know. So no service next Wednesday, but I'll let you know. Okay. So again, thank you all so much. Uh, okay. For the list for uh, for the Founders Day, which is going to be July 21st, we have we're going to do something July 20th. Okay. Uh, we're going to have a, a little uh, get together and have some games and have some fun on July 20th. Uh, so we'll do that, and the list is going to be out front if you want to sign up for whatever you want to bring, and we'll do it that way. All right, uh, so I'll let you go. Uh, let's pray. Father God, we thank you now for your grace and your mercy. We thank you for your love, your kindness, your truth. We thank you for who you are. Uh, we thank you for all the things that you set forth before us. Uh, Father God, we, uh, we're asking now for your strength. Uh, we're asking now for your peace, that which surpasses all understanding. Uh, Father God, we ask now that you touch all of those who are uh, dealing with bereavement loss of loved ones, uh, those who are str uh, dealing with mental issues or uh, pain in the body. We, we, we pray now for your peace. Uh, we ask you to continue to bless this ministry as we go forward with word, truth, deed, and doctrine. Uh, we just thank you right now. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen.